Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, August 5th, 2016. Just this Friday, today, the stocks kept up to all-time highs and they closed at all-time highs as well. So, in my opinion, this is quite bullish. Uh, there are some mild breadth divergences that point to a very short-term pullback, possible short-term pullback. We'll also try to attempt to pick the top in QQQ using the RSI indicator. Uh, technology closes at all-time highs. The equal weight financials is at 52-week highs, while the XLF uh, version of that same index is very close. While the utilities are under pressure as bonds sell off. So we look at junk bonds that are following the market higher and are close to 52-week highs as well. Uh, well, then we'll look at bonds in more detail and see if we can uh, figure out if we, if we indeed are seeing the bottom in interest rates. Uh, on the currency front, the uh, dollar is holding its ground versus the other currencies, and as a result, uh, commodities, some of the commodities suffered, especially gold, uh, especially during after the upbeat jobs report uh, on this Friday. Oil is attempting to stabilize, uh, and then we'll look at natural gas, which is consolidating as gains, and finally finish off with uh, agricultural commodities that are looking ready to resume their uptrend. All right, let's start off with S&P 500 ETF SPY. This is the daily time frame. So this is a all-time highs, and this is all-time highs close. Um, very impressive move of the Brexit low. Uh, you know, this chart pretty much speaks for itself. This is a extremely bullish chart, in my opinion. I think pretty much every attempt to go lower was uh, met with more buy-in. So uh, I think if we get a you know a pullback of some sort, I think uh, it will probably be a good buying opportunity if we even get that pullback. Very mild breadth divergence here. You can see that there is a slightly lower high uh, for the breadth, uh, breadth indicators. This advanced decline line and the advanced decline volume lines. Very mild divergence here. So. Um, you can see that we're making higher high while here we're making a lower high. So um, we'll see where it goes. Sometimes they just get worked off. Um, alternative scenario, we may get a pullback. Um, very good support level, I think, will be around 211, 210. Uh, there's a lot of things happening in that area. There's the 52, uh, 50 day moving average, and there are all of these peaks here. So. If we do get a pullback to around this area, I think it will be a potentially good buying opportunity. This is a, a little bit longer term chart of the S&P 500. Uh, similar pattern here, just going back, this is the actual underlying index without the dividends. So still all time highs and this is an all time close, all time closing high. In fact, this is a Marubozo candlestick, whereas the open um, and the low high and close are the same so this is a very bullish chart uh, or the candle and we could probably we're probably going to see continuation higher uh, market became bullish in my opinion around uh, end of may of this year uh, before i think it was still kind of bearish and indecisive so um, according to um, my market breadth indicators the market became bullish around this area and um, we're, my subscribers and I are basically only looking at bullish setups and bullish opportunities. Uh, I'm not looking to short at this point. Uh, as far as the um, um, percentage of stocks above the 20, 15, 200 day moving average, you can see we were dropping a little bit, but looks like this was a, actually a um, like a signal to go long, if anything. You can see we kind of dropped and then we kind of surged um, again. So uh, we'll see if we get any kind of uh, further uh, follow through or possibly we get a pullback. Uh, but as far as long term indicators, I think they're firmly bullish. The percentage of stocks about 200 day moving average and the bullish percent index, they're both clearly in the bullish territory. They are one is at 75, one is 76. So no matter how you slice it, this is a um, bullish this are bullish indicators this is a longer term uh, chart of s p 500 this is a weekly chart going back three years 
very uh, nice looking breakout uh, this week we almost came down to this breakout level with a spike below um, intra intra week and looks like it was bought so far so it looks like we spiked down and then uh, buyers came in pushed the prices even higher um, so really this is the brexit right there i think it was completely erased and now we're uh, making all-time highs um, when it will stop nobody knows uh, we could just continue making all-time highs and just keep going uh, especially if the central banks around the world are going to continue with their accommodative monetary practices so we had a this is a qqq on the daily time frame all all time highs here on monday but this is a really weird looking spike um for now i'm going to treat it as you know valid um but who knows maybe they'll figure something maybe this was a rogue trade of some sort but in any case i wanted to point out this rsi here and i wanted to show that um attempting to pick a top in a bullish security um, is quite dangerous see you can see that rsi became overbought here because it became above 70 so what what would you do you would go short here right if it is overbought you go short you short right there and what happens when you short nothing in fact it turns around and makes another all-time closing high in this case so uh, overbought in a bullish security is normal and since this is a bullish security it is normal for it to be overbought oversold in a bullish security would be a buying opportunity so in this case um you know if we're going to be using rsi and let's say rsi drops to let's say below 50 then we should be looking for a buying opportunity but in this case overbought and this is a loosely used term we can just say overextended to the upside um, means absolutely nothing and in fact it's a good sign uh, because there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of buying pressure Uh, this is a QQQ. This is just showing that uh, this week we've been hitting all-time highs, and this is uh, going back to 1990. So we took out this high from the uh, 2000 Y2K bubble. Many key many key sectors are hitting all-time highs. One of them is XLK. Uh, this is a uh, one of the more important ones within the S&P 500 because it accounts for 20% of this of the index. And these are all-time highs for XLK. Um, so this is quite bullish. And uh, technology leadership in technology is a, a good sign because this is a these are high beta stocks and higher higher risk stocks than the general market. Um, XLF, this is a weekly chart of XLF financials, it's still dragging its feet and most likely because of the low interest rates, but it appears that we're attempting to go higher and this is a 52 week high, so we're kind of closing in on the 52 week, 52 week highs. So if indeed uh, later on I'll show the bonds and if indeed we did see um, a top in the bond prices and vice versa the bottom in interest rates then uh, going forward we could see banks uh, doing much better because their margin will increase because that's the way they uh, make money by lending at higher rates than they borrow here is a ryf which is an equal weight financials in a weekly time frame and this uh, week we did hit all-time high uh, this is a, uh, in fact, this is a uh, closing all-time high because we are at 44.80 and the previous one was in 44.76. So this is a, uh, I'm sorry, I meant to say 52-week highs because uh, all-time highs were uh, actually way back when. So this is a 52-week highs. Um, still very positive looking chart. Uh, this is a more broadly diversified uh, ETF, albeit uh, rather thinly traded so it's more for uh, educational purposes now as far as uh, utilities are concerned they are selling off because uh, the interest rates are in fact looking to be about to go up possibly although 
situation in Europe doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, correlate to the situation in the United States, but it appears the United States economy is doing quite well, and this, by extension, will mean that the Federal Reserve will uh, potentially look to normalize interest rates, in other words, raise them later in the year. And if utilities are, uh, utilities are more sensitive to the interest rates, so they are, by extension, uh, selling off. Although, um, honestly, I think the utilities are more correlated to the general market than they are correlated to the uh, treasury bonds. And uh, here is another example of uh, good appetite for risk. This is uh, junk bonds, the high yield ETF, high yield inter high yielding uh, interest rate bonds. Uh, these correlate highly to the general market to the S and P 500. So. I look at them more of an extension of a stock market rather than a bond market. But nevertheless, we are approaching all-time highs yet again. Uh, I meant 52-week highs. We were at 52-week highs back here in the beginning of July. And uh, today we almost hit 52-week highs. So we're very close. So this shows really good appetite for risk. Um, and uh, by extension, the appetite for risk translates into... Uh, uh, higher prices for uh, stocks and higher risk assets. Okay, moving on to the bond universe. Uh, this is TLT, 20 plus year treasury bond fund in the daily time frame. Um, I pointed out this very steep advance um, and I said that this was clearly an unsustainable and I would never buy up here. And we, we did get a pullback uh, and another attempt to go higher, and now it looks like we're attempting to actually go lower. So this peak so far um, is the peak for the bonds, uh, for the treasure bonds. And whether or not this will be indeed the um, peak uh, that we have seen in our lifetimes is, of course, remains to be seen. But uh, for now, um, you know, I am treating this. Um, uh, chart still as a bullish chart, so I would be kind of reluctant to still short it uh, because um, there's quite a bit of support in this area, there's even more support in this area, there's a just tremendous amount of support around 131 uh, because of the multiple touches of that area. So if we break the support around 136 and then where the 50 day comes in, 136, we could easily find support around here. Um, so I would not necessarily um, just write off bonds just yet. Uh, anything is possible, but for now I'm still treating this as a bullish chart. We will see if in the future we will see if indeed this is the top. For now I'm not ready to say that. This is TLT on a uh, weekly time frame. Uh, this is that surge I just pointed out, and then looks like we're correcting. So this could be a flag, a breakout, and then a fallen flag, or f maybe a triangle formation. Uh, and then if we break out of this flag or triangle formation, this will, will uh, call for, well, at least an attempt at all-time highs. So, uh, you know, mal you know, I showed this uh, giant cup and handle in the past. There's this cup that came to fruition. This giant cup and handle, if it does come to fruition, this is a 20% move, and we're 6.2% towards it. So another 12% is entirely possible. This is a more diversified uh, bond ETF, HGG. Very similar picture. Very strong surge to all-time highs. I mentioned that I would never buy up here. Now we're kind of correcting, uh, especially this Friday. Very large uh, candlestick. Uh, now, again, the same goes for this chart, as I'm not yet ready to say that these are indeed the, the highs. Um, maybe we'll correct and then we'll attempt, we'll definitely correct an attempt to make uh, another all-time highs. I mean, they're not going to just give up that easily, I think. Uh, when it will happen or how it will happen is an entirely different story. Uh, I think there's quite a bit of support around, you know, these tops here, around 111.50, and then there's more support down below 
you know, around this area. So, um, and then just just a lot of support around this area, around 109. So there is a lot of places where S&P, where the bonds uh, can bounce and continue its rally higher. A weekly time frame shows a, a very large move uh, from the you know depth of this pattern, kind of like a triangle pattern that did complete the move and then a little bit more even. So this pattern high was hit and now we're possibly correcting another triangle of some sort. So a breakout of this triangle will call for further highs. This is a uh, municipal bond fund. Very nice fund, by the way, provides decent dividends and also extremely low volatility, so you can uh, trade with larger positions. Very similar pattern to the general bond market, but the reason why I'm mentioning this is because AGG does not contain uh, municipal bonds in the, uh, in the index, so uh, if you're a bond investor, you would want to have separate um, fund for municipal bonds, plus they're tax-free. So, uh, very similar pattern. Uh, there's a lot of support here at fifty dollars. What is it? One forty-five. Uh, then there's more support down below here, and uh, even more support around you know forty-nine, fifteen area. So again, uh, to summarize, I think bonds are still in a bull market, but uh, whether this these peaks are indeed the tops, we will see only in a rear view mirror, so to speak. Okay, moving on to the Forex universe. This is US dollar index. This is possibly a bull flag that was here, but now there could be a larger bull flag, which is kind of like, like this whole thing could be a bull flag. Um, and anyways, I, I think this is still, I think, is a bullish chart, uh, in my opinion. I mean, it's very messy. You can see it's like and just going up and down, but this this could potentially still be a bullish chart and we could, um, you know, potentially go higher from here. Uh, you know, as far as the euro and the yen as the pound, the pound is approaching 30 year lows, uh, while the Japanese yen may have made a uh, lower high and this is kind of important, while euro is sort of the uh, mirror image of the dollar index. I, I will look at it in a little bit more detail. So here is the US dollar and the weekly time frame, and this still could be a cup and handle. And if we do break out above 100, then the depth of this pattern is 9%. So we could, um, another 9% move could materialize. So basically this kind of like this whole thing. Uh, let me see how much this is. This is actually 20%. So uh, maybe like this around this much first, you know, 9% on the upside. Uh, if we break out above, uh, you know, 160. So looking at the, the I just wanted to highlight this uh, possible bull flag. So maybe this is one of those messy looking bull flags. And if we, you know, break out, then we can continue higher. Uh, this is a British pound versus the US dollar, kind of like the mirror image also almost. Uh, maybe this is a bear flag and then we break down from here and continue lower. There's a possibility. And finally the yen. I'm, I keep covering yen because I just to me it's a very interesting looking chart and uh, I think um, there is a possibility we are seeing uh, at the very least an intermediate top in the yen because um, I mentioned that so far the yen was not able to penetrate above this level and another touch this week with a rejection looking candle for now. So it's possible we are being rejected around here at the 100 uh, units right there for XDN. Here's US dollar versus Japanese yen. Uh, similar picture, it looks like we are repeatedly being rejected in this level and uh, maybe US dollar will uh, actually rally versus the yen from here. Uh, it's entirely possible. Uh, what that means for the commodities, I'll explain in a little bit. In a little bit, but generally speaking, when uh, you know US dollar gains, it it weighs on various commodities. Okay, moving on to the asset class, 
commodity or however you want to call it alternative currency or store of value uh, gold is really hard to pinpoint because it's so many things to so many different people anyways gold chart to me this is a chart <laughs> and this is a bullish chart but maybe we had a lower high so looks like maybe we need to do some correcting uh, because this is a very strong move uh, very little correcting uh, maybe we maybe we'll finally pull back uh, some substantial pullback at the very least 1300 possibly even lower to 1201 it really will depend on multiple things and i think the biggest one of course is the uh, correlation of dollar and uh, uh, gold which is quite inverse and as I said before uh, if the uh, if the dollar rallies from here against other currencies then we could see you know gold being under pressure and possibly correct further also very large volume here so this is a possibly you know one of two things this could be the initiation of a of a move lower or it could be already the end of a move lower so um either, you know it could be one or the other so for example here we had an enormous spike in volume and really it didn't really mean much did it we just made another all time uh, 52 a high so um for now i'm seeing a lower high here um also this is a very overextended move and i would like to see a correction um, especially now that looks like the you know economic uh, outlook is has improved significantly with the good united states jobs report uh, there will be possibly less demand for uh, safety in gold Here's a weekly time frame of gold continuous contract. Um, we had a breakout above this level here around 1300, a, a continuation higher, throwback, and a possible continuation higher. But you know, for now, we're looking at this as a lower high. And again, as I said before, this is a bit overextended, and a much stronger support, I think, is around 1200. Here's a very long term frame. This is about five years worth of data. And uh, it just shows that we were in the bear market until very recently. And this is a very recent, fresh, new um, uh, bull market in gold. Um, one of my proprietary market breadth indicators is a gold breadth index that rejected every single attempt uh, at, break, at the breakout that gold had here but did confirm this attempt uh, at the breakout. So I think we're now in a new bull market, uh, but I think we're overextended. The same can be said about GDX. This thing is just a monster. Uh, we went from 1240 to 3164. It's almost, you know, almost tripled basically. Um, again, really was no rest. So, uh, you know, a, a continuation higher is indeed possible, but how likely is it? Uh, we'll see, I suppose. Uh, but, you know, I think we need to see some correcting before a continuation higher. Here's this, uh, also GDX in a very longer term time frame, the same uh, showing the same um, weekly time frame as the previous charts of gold and the many multiple breakout attempts that were all rejected. But finally, we have a breakout uh, that did succeed. And this is, again, a very unusual breakout, very strong move. Uh, so uh, a rest of some sort is needed. This is oil in the weekly time frame, uh, going back three years. Uh, I pointed out this rejection uh, a couple of months ago here, around $52 or so. And then we just unraveled from there. And now we're, this could be a hammer candlestick, uh, intra, you know, weekly hammer candlestick, also very large volume. So this is entirely possible that this is a hammer candlestick and it is at a logical level. Um, so if you're, uh, you know, buying support and selling resistance, this is uh, exactly, you know, the level to watch. Um, 
whether or not this is indeed uh, the support that is going to hold uh, is an entirely different story. Maybe we do a little bit bounce and then we just unravel again. I'm already hearing, you know, news that uh, Saudi Arabia is about to start uh, attempting to cut production yet again. Here is USO, United States Oil Fund. This is a tradable vehicle. You can trade it um, just outright, or you can use options as well. Um, this is a also weekly time frame. Very you know similar pattern. We have a, a wedge breakout, a breakdown rather, and continuation lower. Um, again, I think that this is a well, pretty clearly a bearish security. So. Maybe we get a small bounce, but I think the much bigger direction is down. So uh, these all-time lows are need, uh, most likely are going to be challenged sometime in the not so distant future. Distant future. This is natural gas in a daily time frame. Uh, last week we had a very nice-looking candle here, big surge. Uh, but you know, after such a big candle, it's normal to take profit. So this is you know profit taken after the surge, but I think already this week we already had another big candle um, that is signifying that I think the bigger direction is up uh, for natural gas and uh, it's kind of like it's coiling up and I think that if we get a uh, move higher we will uh, most likely challenge the 52 week highs here. There's a lot of resist a support that turns resistance here at $2.50 and the reason for that I'll show in the next chart. So here's that chart and uh, pointed out $2.50 repeatedly um, in my previous videos, you can look them up. Uh, this is an important level and we broke out above this level uh, sometime in May. This was my uh, signal that we're turning bullish and now I'm only looking at, at bullish setups and I'm not looking to short natural gas. Before here, I, before this time I was looking to short natural gas and in fact uh, my subscribers and I were, we were shorting natural gas uh, before this breakout. Now, um, you know, I, I really don't see a good reason to short it. Here's another reason not to do it. Here's a 50 day. Uh, going above the 200 day, this is a golden cross, so, you know, but this is UNG, so it's kind of questionable and more on the natural gas itself, uh, with the golden cross happened even before. Anyways, to summarize, natural gas looking bullish, and I think we're um, most likely going to challenge the 52 week high soon. This is DBA, uh, the Agricultural Commodities Fund. Uh, this is a diversified fund that holds various futures of various uh, agricultural commodities. Uh, so this is one way to have exposure to that uh, sector of the investable universe. Uh, I think this is a, a bullish chart that became bullish around here when we had a breakout, also a golden cross here. But then we kind of hit... Um, I do believe this is 52 week highs. Well, almost 52 week highs. Uh, and then we sort of unraveled. And this was worrisome because we had quite a bit of selling, you know, from this peak, almost two months worth of selling. It looks like we're coming to some sort of a uh, bottoming pattern here. I, I see a bottoming pattern here because we have repeated attempts to for the by the bears to push lower. And so far in this $20.40, $20.38 area, these attempts have failed uh, on one, two, three, four, five, six occasions so far. And now it looks like on Friday we have a surge as well. So this looks like a decent pattern and an attempt to go higher from here. So um, again, I'm looking at this pattern, at this chart from the bullish perspective for now. Here's a longer term chart for a DBA. This was a very long term downtrend, uh, an attempt to bottom, first higher high, first higher low. So we got higher high, higher low breakout. So this is now a higher high, another higher high. And now looks like we're forming a higher low, especially if we hold in this area. And this is possibly a 
bullish engulfing because this is a uh, large white candle that was fully engulfing the previous real body of the previous candle. And so this could be a weekly bullish engulfing, which is, um, you know, quite bullish, especially if we get a follow through next week. Anyways, uh, that's it for this week's recap. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to send them in. Also, if you have comments, please do comment. And if, uh, if you could like the video, that would really help me out. Again, thanks for watching and please stay tuned on how to uh, find us on the internet. Bye-bye. So I wanted to show you how to find us on the internet. Please go to masterchesstrading.com. We do have a trade alert services which are live right now. Uh, so please consider signing up for um, the service it's only $24.95 per month also if you sign up for our mailing list you get a discounted uh, membership um, you get to see uh, what I'm buying and selling and which funds I am looking at uh, potential uh, buy sells etc there's quite a bit of uh, members only content once you log in there is a um, uh, a lot of information about risk control which is actually extremely important uh, for traders because the preservation of capital is really uh, one of the paramount um, to the uh, success of trading. In trading, there's quite a bit of psychology of videos, uh, psychology of trading videos in the members-only section as well. Um, also, I'm uh, going to be starting a dividend aristocrats um, service. Uh, for now, it's free for the members that are logged in, uh, that are already paying members. So. Uh, that's another benefit to signing up soon. Uh, the blog section shows uh, the previous uh, posts and market videos, of course. Um, also, I've added a new section here, which is FAQs, and I do get quite a bit of questions about various, um, you know, ideas uh, and questions about the market. So if you do have a question, please don't hesitate to send it in, um, you know, send it uh, here and uh, I'll be uh, able, hopefully I'll be able to answer it for you. All right, um, thanks for watching and please consider signing up for the trailer services. Bye-bye.